Okay, time management. So basically, it's not a uh, rocket science that have specific measure of uh, whatever how you do it and what is the right, what's the wrong. It's more like a technique, like a matters, and it a mix of different type of science, of a management science. We we, we pretend that it be management science, but it actually it's not, because we have different approach about times and method and what we believe and what we not believe that make it really hard to decide what the best answer for everybody but uh, I just try to give my experience and my answer and based on my understanding about social science, psychology, neuroscience and management we see the picture, you see that well the motivation could be really good where you got, where you got to start but you got to go down because that is a feeling that's something unstable. That's why when instead of people that try looking for the different way to motivate themselves are looking for something more manageable. We, I call it discipline. So we know that discipline to keep us do the thing. Repeat it day by day every hour. Then the discipline will keep you growing. And keep you doing things. Whatever it is, 10 years, 20 years, we still do it. That this is our plan, and we start to believe in the plan. So believe in your plan more than believe in your gut. And some uh, temporary motivation is something different. Like we need to be managed of yourself. Okay, let's see what we have up here. What happened this slide? Okay, so that's why it cannot call like kind of science because we have a different. At least I have up here ten different way to understand a concept of times. The general way we understand about it is a linear way, a lineage way, A to Z, 24 hour, 1 a.m. to 12 p.m., kind of like that. When you set up the goal to meeting at 2 p.m., you're going to come in, and it count in by the clock. You cannot just deny it, because it's still coming, you believe it or not. And you have another concept that's circular, that would be the time is like an endless circulations or circle and uh, that's why you explain to the wording of the every every morning is a new day every morning is a new life we, every day every morning we have 24 hours to doing something and how to do it with that so that two major concepts have us uh, easier to management and measure the things but we also have a different concept it's more like uh, philosophy and then more sociology and some kind of uh, spiritual belief. You're going to see up here like the real durations by birth and like his uh, philosophy. Basically, he believes that the real duration is the real time coming to us. It's the real time we can interpret the concept and the change go around us. And that is the real time. If it's time that you spend in the office 9 to 5, you do exactly the same thing, type of some kind of keyboard, you don't feel anything. You just feel it like a one moment. And that moment is way different with the moment when you get out there every one hour to do, do, do every different thing. You have time to go to the park, you don't have 30 minutes running, they're feeling different. 30 minutes but learning is different. So that's why the concept of time of this thing is it's more like mix. And it depends on the differences between us and how philosophy approach we do. Temporality is the same thing. It's like a metaphysic way, like a little bit of the abstract way of going with the real understanding of time. Relationism is about the, how the time changes. Basically the same thing with the real durations, but it's uh, less philosophical then. Because it's just focused on the change. How the time change you after three hours? How you change? That is decide how the time is gonna go by. It's not about the clock. It's about you and how you think and how you feel, how you absorb it. Presentism is just some people. Most of us believe it now is, is something new trending going up. It's belief that the present right now is a time. What something happened in the past is already is a history. It's just our memory. It's not a time anymore. It's just a memory. But it's not happening again. Something happened in the future. It's an illusion that we believe happened in the future. But it's not really happened. 
the thing that really happened is now, right now, this sentence, this second, this little thing happened. So that makes we go in with time management is not really strictly as we do with lineage or circle of time like we do in the scientific management. And uh, dimensionism uh, based on the theory of Einstein that believes that uh, besides three dimensions we going 3D, we going right now, we have another dimension, we call it time-space dimension. And when you go with that time-space dimension, the time is different. And maybe the time is endless when you go up there, when you reach out the speed of the light. The nine, number nine, the metabolic influence. Basically, this thing happens a lot, but you just don't know it. But actually, it's just like our metabolism is different speed, in a different uh, space or state of development. When you was young, your metabolic is much faster. That's why we can do a lot of things with 10 hours. You can learn 10 different things in just 10 hours of a week. And you feel like 24 hours a day is a lot because you can learn a lot of things. You do a lot of stuff in 24 hours. But when you was from one to three or one to four, it depends on different study of uh, human development. But when you get old, that's why a lot of old people say that I don't have much time. Time goes real fast. Because when your metabolic is so super slow and you feel like 24 hours, you wake up at uh, 5 or 7 and you take like a whole hour just try to stay to wake up. And doing something normally when you was young, 20 or 40, you do it by 1 hour or 2 hour of the meeting. But now you take 5 hours to do it. So because your metabolic and your body is much slower, as you feel like the time of the day is too slow. When it's, uh, I'll show you later what I show in, in my uh, table of the time management, I break down every 45 minutes because that is my speed right now. But when I get, I get older, I might be doing it every two hours. So that's another difference. And you gotta, gotta be understand about the differences of the metabolic. Uh, approach about the time and you can do the management much smarter. The, the ten is sort of animal perception basically just like a bio function. The dog see the time different, the cat see the time different, the turtles need to see the time different. And we don't know that uh, our perception of human being perception might be different about the time too but we don't have a deeply study on that. But at least we have deeply study about animals and that's why that is so like the gap between <clears throat> when you learn about animal, <clears throat> of socializing, sorry. We learn about animal, we see that we try to learn about the wolf, because wolf is also socializing animals. Uh, we learn about chimpanzee, but the chimpanzee is really close to us. But some of that concept, it don't fit with human being. We are, we are human, we are a whole different type of species. <clears throat> so that different concept of time I guess understand differently about the time and time management but what I'm doing up here is more like lineage and circular way and a little bit of the mix of the uh, metabolic influence and uh, philosophy on that I'll show you later second part about management you understand what a management basically oh well it, and it good so help you guys so much when doing business basically management is about uh, analyze and synthesize the workflow and uh, working on mostly economic efficiency and labor productivity. There are many different types of, of the definition of management, but the most um, properly that cover everything of the management science based on five steps of the science of the uh, management is including planning, organizing, staffing, directing, and controlling. Basically, controlling is a cooperation between the coordination, reporting, and budgeting, and we'll show up later. That is how we understand the concept, basically. And you gotta go, why? Why we need time management? We ha all have uh, the reason why we need time management. And sometimes people tell us that you need time management, but you don't know how, why you need it, honestly, honestly and authentically. So I can write out some kind of the reason. What, without time management, you basically miss the deadline, your work quality is low, you higher stress, you imbalance your life and work, you gotta get a burnout, and you're gonna harm your professional reputation, that is something you need to care about. 
you don't want to be famous, the guy who keep missing the deadline, keep missing the meeting, and keep failing to get in your task. You definitely don't want to do that because your reputation is something you view for the whole life. And you lose this by one hour. The second, if you master in time management, you can do a better task management. You can do the, the productivity is much higher. So you do a more thing in the day. No stress level, because you don't feel much stress because you already have a plan for that and you have the time for that. So you know you're gonna do it. And at least you, if you know that you cannot do it, you can announce to your team members or your supervisor that oh, I cannot do it with this time, but I can tell you that how I can do it in the next two days, but in the next two days I have two hours free or four hours free, and I believe I can do it. So at least you have a confidence of your time and keeping your reputation and honest. Of course, in the last you had a better work-life balance. Let's see, let's see up here, 12 issue or time waster. Let's see. First, you have lack of priorities. You don't know about the priority of work and life. What you do with this first? If you have multiple work, what are you going to do first? What step are you going to go first and what step are you going to go last? The priority is really important. You want to see it later in this slide. Second, we're waiting for inspiration. Basically, but it's just based on motivations. And that thing is something, it's a whole different thing around us. Some people say inspiration, inspiration by doing the things they like. Some people the inspiration by money, and some people just do it by power, or just by feeling uh, fulfilled or spiritual practice, whoever know. But it's happened, and you just got to see the difference between it, especially you work in the big teams. You, you want to do everything by yourself, that's pretty hard, and technically nobody can do it. Worry about what people will say, caring too much about other perception and idea about, about you. It's not really helpful. It might helpful in the short term to have you adapt your uh, attitude and social network. But in the long term, it impact you. If it impact you too much and turn you to a stressful and uh, uh, distract of the work, it's not worth it. Let's see about you're not living your life. Of course, we'll see it later in this slide. You'll see that uh, my goal setting is more like always have time for family, always have time to do something for the public good. So I don't waste my life every day. Every day I have something for business, something for science, some time for social, some time for myself, and some time for my family. That's how you keep your life balanced. It might be not e equal the time, but you always have time for it. You care about the fear. You care about people complain, basically, just like people say. I care about unfinished tasks that only happen. I see you a lot. Trying to please everybody, that's something that also impact about social science. And it's happened. But when you do a master of time management, you're going to deal with that. You're con comparing yourself, that's this unproductivity, or your low performance, whatever. That thing is more like feeling perception and care about too much about what other people say. You know, you repeat the same mistake if you don't have the solution to deal with it. And perfection. Perfectionism is something you want to do everything exactly the time it is. It happened the same thing when people go with absolutism that everything got to be absolute correct and absolute right. And you cannot do that with social science. Nothing absolute is social science. And nothing absolute is something technique and adaptive like time management. And we don't even have the same way to understand time management anyway. So don't be a perfectionist during this time. Okay, this is my plan, my technology, my technique of how I manage my time. Always break down the five step in order to one to five. Planning always first. Always planning everything 24 hours ahead. Second, know your time. What is the time you wake up? What is the time you do for work? What is your best time you can do some most important task? And what is the time you need to break and get ready to go sleep? That is really important. People always say that we, we live 75 years. Uh, actually, you don't have that much time. You should stay awake for 8 to 10 hours. You gotta go sleep like 8 hours. You spend a couple of hours for go for the road. Let's see what happens with Stefan. We have stuck in this traffic like 2 or 4 hours. You, you basically cannot do too much thing at that type of hour. What are you gonna do? You guys just have like 8 hours free or 6 hours free. And sometimes, like people in France, they spend 3 hours have a dinner. 
So they don't have three hours for work where they spend time for eating. So what are you going to do with other time that much better? That's why you know your time. Priority, Pareto, so Pareto uh, theory is basically the same thing. The priority, the 20% and 80% law is the same thing. Uh, it's not really a scientific way, but uh, it's also saying that you need to priority your work, your task, your life. And how do you priority it? Well, you got to prepare 24 hours ahead and know what your time to do with. Smart goal, something I'll explain later, basically like a business type of goal. You know clearly how many number measurable, how many time you're going to do it, and how your commitment to do it, and how doable it is. After you're planning, you're going to do organizing. As you mean, you put the piece in the right collection, the right sector it's supposed to be. And the 4D methods, basically, it's, it can call another name it Eisenhower matrix. So basically, it's a do, uh, defer, it was some something else like do so and don't something you can relate delete it you don't need to do it anymore and so you have smaller plan so smaller task and goal as you can focus on that by priority a b c d methods is also the kind of same thing tracking a reminder basically you got to do subtracting reminder you can do it by apps you can do it by uh your alarm system you can do it even they have like a, some task uh, record a task tracking app on a phone or by a smartwatch but it, make sure to do it like a little bit simple and just focus on tracking your reminder you just cannot go to a phone and tracking the alarm showing up and you take 15 or 20 more minutes outside the plan to just do the like scrolling some kind of TikTok and Facebook you're just wasting your time group task it basically is like I showed you later in my uh, tables that uh, I grouping every task related to email and gmail in the same one and i do it in one hour that's why because i turn in a task and e answer email i just answer everything at the same time might be the content is different the business is different but you can spend the same time with the same things it's make you focused on that and take you some way to workflow maybe they have a whole book a couple books talk about the workflow this go the same flow of what do you do with your emails second what do you do with the business decision making process and what you do when you do it like um, uh, scientific research so you get a whole different flow of the work but you got to put everything in the same time of the same group of the workflow so you can focus on that and don't get distracted by other things you focus on like even the social media you focus on making making posts that related to the business a you got to focus on that you just cannot counting one hour in Facebook is a focus on doing that business if you don't make the post because you just spend like 45 minutes seeing someone else doing things something do someone do nails and someone does argument and politics or Trump saying something it is not doing business and it's not in the same workflow making posts is making posts and in the same group you can make a post in Facebook making post share in Instagram and making posts in Twitter in the same groups. Making posts and spend 30 more minutes reading something else is not in the same group. Staffing basically is like you caring about yourself. You caring about that you are the human being, you're not a machine. You cannot do everything exactly at the same time. It's a plan and you don't need break. You can work 10 hours, 12 hours. Well, that's why the people like Elon Musk or someone work like 80 hours, 100 hours, they have more trained to successful in their expertise than other that they can work more. Most people cannot do that. That's why that's what we gotta figure out. You are the 99% or you are the top 1% that can go do everything exactly at the same time and handle the intensive amount of work. My recommendation that I, I know that I'm not that type of people. I always take 15 minute break. You can see that each of my bullet will be one hour, but I always put it like 45 minutes. So after 45 minutes of hard work or intensive working or deep work, whatever, I take 15 minutes. Set an alarm, 45 minutes. Start doing that. When the alarm showing up, turn off the alarm. Start to go to break. Don't work anymore. Don't see screen anymore. Don't read book anymore, whatever I'm doing. Walking around, uh, cooking or whatever. Eat something, drink some coffee, uh, open the window, look outside, do whatever that don't really talking like 
straightforward to your conscious ability. Uh, that is really important. And even as really recently, they have some neuroscientists uh, going on research that you practice for a couple of hours, but after that, you stop and you just close your eye for 20 seconds. Don't do anything. Just close your eye for 20 seconds. Even don't do meditations. Just close your eye and take a break, like a real break. Don't consume any kind of information, any kind of voice in your, in your mind. Close your eye 20 seconds. So that in your brain, they turn back the whole couple of hours of practice in there. And you remember it and turn it to memory, turning your, your skill and your cognitive ability. So that's important at a short break. And in 15 minutes, even know the, the story of Leonardo da Vinci, the kind of genius that would be uh, hundreds of billion people, or okay, one or two people like that. He just take like 15 minute nap, power nap, every day. So he take like eight power nap and work for three or four hours session. So he never, he don't really take like a long sleep, eight hour like us. He take like 15 minutes nap, that's it. And how you can work more time because it's basically that's how let's spend like two to three hours of sleep and get 21 hours of work. That's how genius people doing, but they gotta figure it out if you are genius or you are not, you gotta test it. But staffing, you care about social and psychological goals. What that mean? It means that you want to make your day, it's not only working like a machine and get a burn now, you want to do is something related to society and psychological fulfillment. Because you are human being and you are socializing animals. So you want to keep it interact with people, make your day fulfillment, make your day worth it, and you still keep your motivation and keep your energy, keep your balance that you don't want to burn it all in the business. Because when you do attackment, it's related to a different theory, so yeah, attackment uh, and endowments uh, effect that you will focus too much on the business. And when that business stop, the business burned out, and your business collapse, what else, what else do you have in your life? Nothing. That's a problem. And that's why a lot of people come to society. It's because they don't have a job anymore. Besides a job, who you are, you are nothing but a job with a worker. That's a problem, and you got to balance that because nobody can do it. I mean, the system wants you to do that. The, the boss wants you to do that so you can make the best profit they can get. But in the standpoint of humanity, you got to keep it balanced. You got to keep it like a human being. Socializing, learn something else, care about your feeling, care about psychological goal, like what you want to do, what you want to feel fulfilled today, what you relax today. And really think about it, take some time for that. And one more, they're gonna do adaption. The best thing of human being is adaption. That's why we're here, one of the best civilizations. We adapt with change. What's the adaption? It means the work, the timetable be like this. So sometimes you have something disconnect, something bad happen, uh, something emergency happen, you cannot focus on the task like you're supposed to do in the plan. You adapt it, you just take it, okay. Now I take this meeting. This meeting is supposed to be one hour. Now I take two hours. It's okay. Put one out hour, and you go to other job. Go down there, and if you just start thinking about the adaptation, because you got a priority. What's the most important, and what is not? Sometimes you got be adaptation, and something a lot of crisis coming in. You have a better ability of problem solving, and that is that is a miracle of a human being. Adaptation. You got to live with that. They cannot go strictly like a robot. Okay, <clears throat> directing basically just like how do you delegate your task. Morning for the MIT, MIT is the most important things basically. You, uh, you do the most important job that takes the most of your cognitive ability in the morning or whatever of the day, whatever the, the your zone, second one. Some people just do really great at the night time. So if they put something great, need a lot lot of the brain function on night time. How about that? So that's why this thing cannot be the rocket side. People have different time zone and people have a different type of work. But know your time and know your zone. Know your peak time is the most important. Block the distraction. The distraction is something make the direction derail. That's why when you work, throw the phone away, 
and set it in a silent uh, vibration, whatever. When you read the book, stay away from the computers, stay away from the phone. When you do is something society, socializing, stay away from that thing related to business, related to politics, or whatever is happened to you. Know your things and just group the task in the right things and keep it, keep it, get it done. When you know that in the end of the day, you have a fulfillment day. That different with people with no other direction and people just don't know how to do everything in the mess. Last thing about controlling. Basically, controlling it just means you need to revise your plan by report. Reading your plan, reading your table every day, every morning, you wake up, you know that, what you're going to do, what your plan is. Basically, at my ability right now, I just take, it takes me one hour in Sunday from 10 to 11 to planning for the whole week. That, because I know my time. And then I can show you the, the table after this. That basically how I'm doing and I every day around 8 to 9 I take one hour I take like 15 minutes to see evaluate how my plan going so far yesterday and I, I even know can track it way back to the early of the March how I do it and I start to publish that and you guys still can attract uh, access to that link right now to see how it's going and what you do is super easy it's just copy so make a copy of my table and put your table, put your task on that. And it never takes one hour. But try to do it. It got better and better every time you practice on that. And next time it'll take like one hour to do it. And it's not great for you. You can have more eight to seven hours to do something else. Peer review. So basically, a little role related to some kind of research after this. But basically, we we pretty bad at uh, self-evaluation, human being in general. So that's why we need someone to help you to evaluate your plan and how your performance, but you cannot give the right evaluation of yourself. That's the problem, and how you're gonna keep it managed and control your plan by get someone help you out, coordination with someone, let them review your plan. That's why my plan is still keep up there, flow away, Floating on YouTube, on Facebook, or whatever organization I'm sharing with them. That okay, they'll take a look about that. I don't care. They'll take a look. And if they have any question, this is a good time. I can have more time to think about my plan and make it better. That how they dealing with something uncontrollable and crisis and questioning. Third, how to control your time in minute and like a micromanagement alarm. The same thing with the reminder. But more alarming is something you got to believe on that. When alarm ring in, turn off the, the computers, do something else. When alarm ring in, get back to work. Stop rolling some kind of, of the Facebook, uh, Instagram, whatever. And budgeting. Budgeting is just like some people say, treat your time like money. You uh, Treat your time because you have the budget of time. And, and it's not wrong. I mean, it's right. When you see the control and you see that, you know how many time you have. Right, right, know your time and know your time left in your pocket. You know that how many time you can spend with us. Like for example, we spend ten hours with this business, ten spend two hours with other non profit. That that my budget. I mean I cannot if I get one couple more hours with you guys, I gotta uh, compromise a couple more hours with my wife on doing my self study and it impact my research life or in my family life in some way. So that is basically the technique of that. A little bit of goal setting. That everybody is talking about a smart goal. Basically, it's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, a time bounds. If we read introduced in 1981, basically it's more like this. Like basically, like you wake up at eight, do 100 push up. That's it. That's how you evaluate it. If you do 99, you fail. 101, you achieve it. It's good. Next next week I win I in hinges into 120 150. You wake up at seven, you fail. You wake up at eight ten, wake up seven. Okay, you're good. Sorry, you're good. You have one hour more. You wake up at eight ten, you fail. You late. Next time do it better. You go straight to the point. That how the smart goal going. But uh, I'm more focused on a second one. I'm more focused on it's like the uh, psychological goal setting theory of Elliot and. Uh, locker and light time doing mostly basically uh, your life you need achievement goal 
that you want to achieve something. You want a great block writer. Okay, you want to write ten block a, a week, kind of like that. That's the one you want to achieve. Social goal, interpersonal life. You want to be friend. You want to make more friends. You want to be a couple more hours with your family. That is a social goal because we are social animals. Personal goal. What's something it personally significant to those? That's one. Like for example, some guy want to be million dollars. Achieve a million dollars. You gotta achieve him and a social goal at the same time. Sometimes you want to feel good. Someone wants to go peaceful, kind of like that. So you gotta figure it out by yourself. You get this your plan and your goals. Five criterials. That that's why I like uh, lock a lot of goal than smart goal because it's have more human being type in that commitment, clarity, challenging, complexity, and have a feedback. I mean, complexity not too complex. Like I want to make the strategy plan for next five years. Well, it's too complex for you, so you gotta be cooperate with other people. If you set a goal too high, you cannot reach it because you tend about to quit. Challenging is not too much challenge. Your physical body will take like fifty push up. It will set the challenging goal. It's a fifty five. It's not hundreds or two hundreds at the same time. No matter what other people doing, you gotta do it by your way. Because you know that. Is your limit. Pareto, Pareto principle. Some guy in Italy a long time ago. It's just more like a little bit of a collective number. It's not really right, and it's not a fi fixed kind of science. But it teaches us something about the priority. Twenty percent action and effort bring in eighty percent result. A B C D E basically is just like most important, less important, no consequence. You do it or not. Delegate it means that you don't have to do it. You can give it to other people. And e eliminate. You can delete it. Basically, you need to do it. But you got a planning on that to know that which one you want can delete and which one you cannot. That's why you need twenty four hour head. Forty system or Eisenhower matrix. The same thing. Delete, delegate, defer, or do. Turn your four square and you know that which one you're gonna do for now or later. Okay. Let's see, I have a new research from Drydorf 2020 in Harvard Business Review talking, have different perspective, of seeing things more like the three skill of time management, awareness, arrangement, and adaption. You see that something will be awareness basically is know your time and know what you do or that you don't. Arrangement is like organizing way and adaption is something like be flexible, it's something a little bit newer than this research. And they do a fighting after testing on 120 of the volunteers and see that people basically struggle with awareness and adaption more than arrangement. This means that you don't know what, what is your time and what, you know what, how to priority things and you don't know how to adapt when the planning change more than you do an arrangement. You do, do an arrangement really good. You know what the ABCD but you don't know what you're going to do when it change. So, second, polycrinos for polychronicity, basically is a scientific way of multitask. And people think that multitask is a good time management, basically it's two different things. Multitask is more like ability of doing multiple things at the same time. And time management is know what the time for you to do things, A, B, C, D. And it's not the same thing. And they find out, basically, in that population, uh, only 2 or 3% volunteer can do a multitask. And, and the rest is not. So that you know that in the broadest perspective, you gotta test it. You are a multitask type, or you not. You gotta multitask in a minority. A few percent of human beings around the world can do it. And you gotta also think about the quality. You do five things at the same time, but only get like 60% of performance when you do two things, and then both of that is 100%. Which one is better? You don't need to do multitask. If that one don't get the right result you need. And the last one, a lack of accuracy in cell evaluation, basically the same thing I tell you guys. That you, you pretty, we pretty suck at evaluate ourselves. That's why you need someone to help you, or some science, some machine to evaluate you, maybe chat GPT, whatever. But you pretty suck at that, so we gotta be careful with yourself. How to improve to give some kind of bullet up here. Basically the same thing I'm doing for right now. Finding peak performance time, the best time to do the, the hardest thing and the time you don't toggle with something, take a lot of brain power. But it's the time, the same thing, timing up, 
allow me. Realistic evaluation. When you give evaluation, you gotta be realistic. You do it, you get it, or you fail. Right? Future time perspective, basically just planning ahead 24 hours for a whole week, a whole month, a whole year. You know that this time in the future, what you're gonna do? Avoid sunk cost fallacy. Basically, you spend two hours for design the logo, but it's still going nowhere. It still impact to other tasks you gotta do, like writing blog. But you gotta stop doing that and start doing blog because you gotta do most of the job together. You just cannot do the design a whole week and failing to do the blog. But the last thing management manager gonna see that you're failing to do the blog. Priority is a typical thing. Schedule, protected time. Protected time is some time you prepare for doing things like one hour meeting. It's been strictly one hour. I protect that time for a meeting. 15 minute break. I protect that time for, for take a break. Because if I don't have break, my ability will go down and my focus flow will go down. Workflows go down. So it impact the whole plan. What I'm doing now, just because a 15 minute they want to do extra of something. Half side goal basically is like you set up the goal too high with your ability now because your your lack of accuracy and cell evaluation. So you got to cut the half side of your goal, so so you can easier to achieve it and build up the confidence to do it. Thing. Habit stacking basically is just adding the work, uh, the task with your habit. Like I have habit of reading. So that's why I put a lot of work related to reading in the morning in the same work group I'm gonna do. And that's how I deal with it, much faster and much easier. I like to planning things. That's why I do a time management table board, super easy. Not challenge to me because it's stuck to my habit. Short break, the same thing, 15 minute break. Meaningful reminder, it means that you just not do a reminder like a phone alarm and you don't know. You don't know what happened without alarm ringing or not. Just strictly fixing number 45 minutes, 15 minutes. But it alarm it, give you a meaningful reminder this 45 minute is the best performance of you doing planning or doing business. This 15 minute, it give you the meaning that you have 15 minutes to refresh your mind, take your brain a break, take your cell a break, to get back your cognitive functions and get you better to focus the second task and bring back of the performance curve of what you're supposed to do. A contingency plan basically you just have adaptive plan. Okay. Another writing of Jensen's twenty twenty first also the Harvard Business Review about some perspective of the trap or the time management. Basically have three chart. Pressure deliver basically is when you break your time and you show up people, okay I have a couple hours for you. You have the pressure, but you have to gotta keep your word. That I say that I have two hours for you. Okay, so what the result of the two hours? Okay, Tony, tell me what 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 your result? Uh, and you go to nowhere. Because you have pressure, you go too much on that and you impact it all other stuff. You always think about that two hour of working things and you pressure yourself. So the and you have also have a four to six tasks a day. It also it make you really stressful to keep the schedule like a strictly. The solution that the transition remind that just reduce the volume, just don't do too much for a day. And just make sure you get the right strat you need. 40% extra, like a little bit challenging, but not too much challenge that cannot achieve it. You make your inner pressure, you pressure yourself basically, while you try to want to be another type a worker, or CEO who can do like 40 hours or 80 hours. It's not gotta know yourself and how the stress tolerance you can get. Second, that it related to cognitive overload. Basically, you're doing too much stressful thing. You're reading sign, you dealing with investor, you talking with the smart guy that spend you too much time, make a lot of decision that related to vital of the whole business that waste too much of your cognitive ability and your brain is overload. Everybody have a limit of the brain ability. And it happened with the time and the environment too. So you gotta know when you get overload and how to get over the overload that you're gonna do a decision, prepare the decision by principles. Basically, 
wake up and you try to find the, the closest, basically, that a decision, you gotta mix and match the thing in that thing. But now you just go black t shirt and uh, jean, that's it. Like, I just wear the pink roll, that's it. Simple. So I don't get to spend my time on that. I spend my cognitive ability on something else that's much more important in my priority. And the last thing a procrastination, distraction. So the only solution for that is structures. And a lot of people say, I still cannot do it. Well, you gotta try it first. I did not, and this is not a rocket science one more time. So this means that you cannot solve everybody's problem. But you gotta try it first. And at least you have me up here that keep you guys on track and keep you guys in the structures that I don't do it. A little bit adding, adding thing idea about procrastination. Something happened that you don't have the valid reason to do it. That's why you delay it. You don't have a good reason to write in block. That's why, because you're picking a topic you don't like. That's why you don't want to do it. It's too lazy to do it. The tackle is too big. I'm pleasing job. You want to do marketing, but you just don't know how to do marketing. But people put you uh, on that social label, but you have to do it. But it make you feel unpleasant. That's why the procrastination. This organized basically take too much tasks at the same time and get the busy day, hustle life, and don't know how to organize. Overwhelming, getting two tasks at the same time, the same things. Perfectionists want everything exactly with the best quality at the best time. It's a slightly different between the perfectionist and highest high performance. High performance is doing the best of you can. But perfectionist doing the best of you can based on the general perception. That's what that's what a different. You think about people say it this curve is perfect. But to do that curve you make five hours. How about this do something high performance eighty percent of that? And it's taking you one hour, and you have four hours to do something else. You also work making it work. And lack of execution basically is a lack of decision making ability. You don't, you cannot decide. Okay, wake up, sick. Alarm ringing, wake up. Just cannot. That execution. You just cannot negotiate with the phone and say, okay, give me fifteen more minutes. I mean, that's your time. It's not the phone time. The phone is just the alarm for you. You cannot negotiate with the dark side of yourself. What Carl Jung say is the shadow, the laziness, the instinct, whatever. So remember that when you have plans, stick with it. 